I just wanted to show our customers how much we care and how much of our own blood and sweat we're putting into these products. This isn't something that's just nine to five. This is 24 seven. I started in 96. Uh, I started as a product manager there, developing products, bringing in off the shelf, helping with tech, training, pretty much a lot of stuff inside the building. Then I transitioned into the R&D manager. What I'm doing is that same position now where it's dedicated to the development of all of our in-house design products, stuff that we call the Eastwood or Eastwood Elite line. All right, so it's called the SCT. And uh, I think it came from one of the marketing guys. It wasn't me, I'm not good at the naming, uh, but it's surface conditioning tool. And that's what it does. We got some of these drums on here that'll just tear Bondo rust, old paint right off of there. And then we got these other ones like this one on here, which will actually um, condition the metal, give it a nice burnish, um, stainless steels, aluminums, anything like that. The reason I wanted to do the drum instead of a traditional horizontal disc spinning like that is because it, it cleans itself. It's like a paddle wheel on a boat. It's always cleaning itself and throwing all the stuff out of it. So you take a disc like a seven or nine inch like this and you start tearing paint off of there. Well, you're, you're burning that paint. And if it's old like 60s primer, that was lacquer. All you're doing is just melting it and moving it around. It loads up your disc. A drum is continually cleaning it. As this thing's spinning, as it's spinning like that, it's picking the stuff up throwing it out up there. You have clean stuff coming back down for your next pass. That's the benefit of it. It's the speed. Uh, it can dig deeper. You can get through a lot more Bondo a lot quicker than you can. You know, you have a surface area of like this big trying to go down through a quarter inch of Bondo. It's going to take you a little while. Where this thing just digs down, plows it right off. I think, I think the other methods out there are good. I think they all have their place. Like chemical, that'll get through a, a lot of layers quickly and without any elbow grease to a point. A drawback with chemical, I don't like the methylene chloride that used to be in them or any of the, you're doing it in a home shop, that's horrible in a home garage. Blasting is great for uh, heavy rust, great for frames. That's what I still use on there because you can get into the brackets, angles, stuff like that, where even this won't get. So that has its place. Uh, the rotary, I talked about that. I just don't, I don't think it gets down to the metal quick enough versus the time you're using on it. That's why something like this with a drum is just more efficient. Once we came up with the, uh, the final prototype of what we really wanted to test this thing on, it was a uh, 66 Corvair that I picked up at a junkyard, seeing it out there. We're out there looking for Chevy parts for doors and seeing this thing. So I uh, picked that up and then at the same time, Cody got a 67 Camaro. So we had them out back and it was great real world test. You can talk about all the lab testing you want, but that's completely different when you take something like a prototype and put it into real use. So we stripped both of them cars uh, down to bare metal. We kept track of how many uh, consumables, how many drums were used on it, if anything happened to the tools, stuff like that. So that was, the, that was the first real world. When I came up with the concept, I wanted belt driven. And, and the reason why was I thought we would need to have like a stall, like a, 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 like a safety link in case the drum got caught in something, it wouldn't flip your arm over something like that, you would slip a belt. But what we found out was that wasn't the case at all. This thing just powered through. It never really got hung up on anything. So the design that we ended up with was, it's all gear, spur gear all the way through here. Uh, you have your gear case in here and then your linear gears out to your drum, which is what has made this thing over the last five years just bulletproof. You, know, you can, when you talk to the guys that have one of these things, you can do anything with it and it doesn't stop. Now, this isn't just for the DIY. It was designed, it was designed for our customers. It was designed for the guys at home that are restoring the cars, boats, motorcycles. But what we found out was that the, uh, the professionals latched onto this very quickly. Uh, a lot of them, if you look on social posts, a lot of the big professionals are using this thing. In fact, just recently we've seen it on one of the uh, Star Wars spinoffs. It was, uh, I believe it was the Mandalorian who was using this thing on the side of uh, some spaceship engine cleaning off some debris. So that's how big this thing's gotten. So there's not really anything out there in this inline design. Like I said, there is a tool that was out there, and I believe it was German, um, that's offset. And, and that was designed for just for burnishing of, uh, of blending stainless welds and burnishing them. Like say, say you're in a restaurant business and you're putting together, you know, a long benches of you know, restaurant stuff. 
and you have to seam them on site. That's what they would use this for, and that's a beautiful job for that. But, but we have the US design patent on the inline design of this unit here. So if you do see another one out there, it's just a knockoff. It's not gonna be the original. This is such a useful tool that I think any fabricator and every DIY guy out there needs in their toolbox. When you buy one of our developed products, it's something that you know we put our heart and soul into it and something that we needed for our own shop and our own projects, something that you can use and you can trust. That's the biggest takeaway I'd like from this video.